Welcome friends to the 24th lecture on module 2, where we are going to discuss about some exercise on subjective and objective questions on module 2 and of course, we will also extend the study what we did in the last lecture on FMEA. This is on module 2, where we are focusing on operational safety. of HSE practices in offshore and petroleum engineering. So, in the last lecture we discussed about the cause and effect diagram which is important to carry out an FMEA study. We have been discussing an example of an airbag system in a passenger car. Why this example is taken? Because it can be easily understood and realized how comfortably an FMEA can be applied for a given problem of this order. Of course, if one is interested to know more about the FMEA studies applied to other mechanical electrical systems, please look into the book which is authored by me, HSC Management in offshore and petroleum engineering. Srinivasan Chandrasekharan, which is authored by me, published by Wiley. It is available, there are many examples which has been solved, there are many studies which has been also referred in the textbook in addition to what we have covered and explained in these lectures. This is also an outcome of the NPTEL studies what we did at IIT Madras. So, I urge that for more references and more detailed understanding please go through this textbook. Also, I have given you many references, couple of them are closely associated to FME alone where we discussed FMEA studies on mechanical wave energy converters, which are very interesting. We have also discussed examples on offshore triceratops, offshore platforms. FMEA and risk analysis has been indicated. So, please go through these references available in MTL website to get more information on this. Now, let us continue with the discussion what we had in the last lecture. We have identified the causes and effects of an airbag system in a passenger car. So, before we move on to FMEA study for this particular case, let us try to revive what do you mean by severity, what do you mean by occurrence and what do you mean by deductibility? Because it is important for us to really do an FMA study for this. So, let us see what is this. So, I will write down the values here. It is easy for me to use the other part of the blackboard. Let us say severity, occurrence and deductibility. We already know severity 1 means no effect. Severity 10 means very hazardous and one can have 5 as moderate and 8 as serious. Similarly, for occurrence 1 failure is unlikely, it will not fail at all in the service life of the system, whereas 10 failure is certain it is going to fail and phi is occasional. Similarly, detectability 1, my controls will certainly detect failure. If I have a scale of 10, then certainly will not detect the failure and in the case of phi, it might 
probably detect the failure that is the order we have ok. So, let us understand this and we already know them let us do an FMA worksheet for this particular problem. So, we should include the RPN as well. So, let us say let us open up a table this is a professional FMA worksheet which has been done for this kind of problems let us say part or the process ok. Instead of doing this I think you pay attention to the board I will directly project this. So, we can explain this correctly. So, please pay attention to the board it is easy for us to really look at the FMEA worksheet in a specific order. So, if I pay attention to the screen now you will see that the FMEA worksheet is projected there on the screen. So, part or process name is entered here the plant affected or the manufacturer's name is entered here the person responsible for action control is entered here. Okay. So, who is going to follow up the action his name is entered it is a professional worksheet. Who is the design responsible officer his name is entered here what is the model number and date that is entered here and at what date you are doing FMEA is entered here. Subsequently if you have got any other parallel area involved in the design you can mention them here. If you have got any engineering changes done in respect to this model you can always say what changes done at what dates and what models you can enter it here the details and this is the summary where we are going to show the action results. Now, a typical FMEA worksheet is same as what we had in the earlier one for anti skid breaking system which is qualitative. Let us look into the function of the process let us take in this case inflate airbag airbag has got to be inflated because that is how it will protect the injury for a person in case of accidents or heart breaking. The failure mode one of the failure modes we have already seen about 6 failure modes for this problem in the last lecture let us pick up one such failure mode what we say bag does not open let us say the bag does not inflate at all ok. The effect could be it may injure the passenger the severity if you look at the scale here the severity says 1 there is no effect but a 10 is very hazardous. So, let us go for a scale of 8 it is an arbitrary number you can also change it to 10 if you want, but you will agree that since it is going to injure the passenger any number beyond 5 is reasonably correct here ok. Let us say the occurrence is not traced in the beginning ok because it is going to happen only when it is required to be inflated airbags will inflate only in case of a specific shock received by the car or the vehicle ok. So, occurrence is not indicated here the potential cause of failure why this air black is not opening what could be the cause which we can see from the cause and effect diagram sensors which could control the opening of the air bag is not working that is the cause that is the potential cause for this failure. Let us say after we understand that there can be a potential cause of this failure sensors may not work sensors are checked let us say in the design and then we revisit this once again and say even if sensors are present there may be a possibility that it may fail and the occurrence of this failure in the lifetime of the vehicle could be on a scale of 2 let us say. So, what do you mean by 2? One failure unlike so, that can be in hypothetical case that the manufacturer says it cannot happen in my design that the airbag inflation will not be controlled at all it means it will certainly work that guarantee though you can say hypothetically yes, but you should always have a provision that it may not work sometimes in the entire lifetime of the vehicle or the service level of the vehicle. So, let us put a number 2 here saying that it is close to fairly unlikely but it may happen let us say the occurrence is there ok that is why you put a number 2 here. So, what are the controls which are added after the model has been revisited we have provide LED indicators LED indicators will be in the panel of the dashboard showing that whether the sensors are working or not working. For example, you have a sensor in the dashboard saying your seat belt is worn or not there may be a sound also coming in some vehicles. So, one can again provide an LED indicator in the control panel or in the front panel of the dashboard of the vehicle which tells me that airbag sensors are working or not let us say it may be blinking it may be glowing whatever may be the case ok. So, to those with that provision made in the in the model change 
your detectability of this failure mode is becoming higher. What does it mean is you can certainly detect it the failure, but it might detect 6. The sensors on the LED may also not work because of the battery improper functioning. So, let us put a scale of 6 here on a scale of 10. So, now the severity and occurrence, the severity and occurrence is coming to be 16 and severity, occurrence and detectability is the RPN number which is risk priority number. Once the risk priority number is higher, then one should say add additional sensors to indicate the working because we only provide LED, but it says put some more additional sensors. That is the recommendation or the action to be taken against the latest model of this particular car. Similarly, let us look into the next function, <coughs> retrain the passenger. The occupant is unable to withstand the inflation force. The reason could be he could be a lightweight passenger. In that case, the severity cost on the passenger because of this particular cost will be very, very high. Therefore, it is 8. The passenger not wearing a seat belt can be one of the potential cause of this failure. So, advise him to wear a seat belt, put a sensor saying that seat belt is not worn. In that case, the occurrence can be a scale of 4, let us say. Occurrence scale of 4 indicates that it is still occasional that the passenger will be injured because of inflation of the airbag, it is still close to occasional. You do not have to provide any control for this except that you make a sensor showing seat belt is not worn. But the detectability is on the 10, it means the failure is certain. If you do not wear a seat belt, you will have be, you will be facing the injury provided it is a lightweight passenger. That is why it is advisable not to actually house infants or children in the front seat of the car. So, if it is so, then the detectability is 10, you can say the failure is going to be occasional, detectability is going to be on a scale of 10, it means you will not actually notice that such failure is going to happen. So, it is on a scale of 10, for sure it cannot be detected at all, because nobody knows whether he is wearing a seat belt or not, or nobody is having a control whether the infant is sitting or not sitting in the front seat. Therefore, detectability for sure cannot be done, therefore it is a scale of 10. So, now if you look at the severity and occurrence, 8 and 4, 32. Severity occurrence and detection risk priority number 320, which is fairly high relatively compared to inflation of an airbag. Okay. So, one can easily understand from this table that relative scale of a risk priority number will exactly tell me which component or which failure mode is most critical in the given system. Then that can be addressed. Once it is addressed, then action results are being undertaken. Then once again, this can be conducted, what action has been taken, therefore now what is the severity, occurrence and detection and what is an RPN. The one can always compare whether the RPN number available made after the action taken is lower or higher. So, obviously it will be lower because you take an action and that is implemented in the design, therefore this will be lower. So, this is going to be the summary sheet at the end which will show me what revision has been taken or what actions has been implemented after the model date and therefore, now the product is ready for release to the commercial market. So, all electromechanical systems mandatorily requires an FMEA to be done or FMECA to be done which identifies the critical component or the critical failure mode. Does it not always identify the component because we are not talking about the component, we are talking about the failure modes that arise from the component failure. Okay? We are worried about the cause and effect, we are not talking about the component replacement. So, it is not actually a mechanical design revision, it is actually the functional aspect of the failure of mechanical design. Therefore, it is a failure mode effect analysis, that is how it is done. So, friends, in this module we have covered all topics as recommended and listed in the website of module 2 of this course. So, let us quickly see some exercises where some subjective and objective questions are posted and some answers are discussed then and there. So, let us have a question here, occurrence of a single or sequence of events that produce unintended loss. So, these are all objective questions, let us see you are able to answer them, occurrence 
of single or sequence of events that produce unintended loss. is known as you can try to look into the notes I will give you the answer anyway is called as accidents. The next question let us see are you able to answer you take this exercise very seriously it is easy for you to really revisit all the lectures back again ok. Let us say the chemical or the physical condition that has potential to cause damage to people, property and environment is called physical or chemical condition scenario. So, the answer is as you correctly found out hazard. Third, measure of an expected effect of the results of an incident, measure of an expected result of an incident. is called let us say there are varieties of answers available here hazard consequence failure accident. So, I am looking for the measure of an expected result of an incident nothing but the concept. Fourth could be relationship between frequency and number of people. suffering a given level of harmless from a hazard is expressed as or is called as relationship between frequency and number of people suffering a given level of harmness from realization of an hazard is called as societal risk. As I said friends in HSC practices the terminologies the vocabulary are very important. All may look alike, but you should be precisely knowing what vocabulary to use at very specific point It's very important. Estimation of uncertainties associated with the entire process of risk assessment is called as estimation of uncertainties associated with risk assessment is called as risk characterization it is not risk evaluation, risk evaluation is something different please look into the notes. Sixth action taken to control or reduce risk. Is called risk aversion
dash are used for representing societal risk. Generally, how social risk are measured is using FN calls. Prevention of hazard occurrence through proper hazard identification through proper hazard identification assessment and elimination is called safety. In fact, safety is defined like this. I will also pose you some questions for your self learning. Can you define individual and societal risk interesting question what are the differences between risk and safety what are the application issues of risk assessment What do you understand by loss? What do you mean by acceptable risk? The answers for these questions are available in the lecture notes itself. You got only revisit them and keep referring to your notes back to get the answers. Very interesting question. What are three systems commonly used as measure of accidents? One can easily recollect them. OSHA is one which is used, system is used to measure this. Other can be fatality accident rate, third can be fatality rate per person per year. Now, the question is 14b. What is the most important common feature between them? The most important common feature between them is all three methods report number of accidents. and the fatalities for a fixed number of working hours. To be very precise, fixed number of exposure hours. Okay? During a specific period. So, both are fixed period and number of working hours, both are fixed in all the three methods. Okay, that is very interesting and very important for you to remember. What are the steps taken to defeat an accident process?
list types of risk let's say dash is the first step in risk assessment what could be the first step in risk assessment it is hazard you have to identify the hazards first what is a gold plated system it is that system which shows low probability in minimum consequence the question asked is is it good to have a gold plated system the system which shows low probability mean minimum consequence always the best no doubt about it but this is an indication that unnecessary budget has been spent on a system to retain as a gold plated system that's the problem okay 19 dash identifies the potential hazards and problems during operation i think all of you will be able to answer this hazop list different hazard identification methods what do you understand by hazard control hazard evaluation and hazard monitoring what is hazard analysis dash is the rating corresponding to seriousness of an effect of a potential failure in electro mechanical systems the moment i see failure detection or failure analysis in electro mechanical system i will always recollect fmea or fmeca in fmea or fmeca the one which is correspond to seriousness is severity fmea is dash level analysis so component level analysis the main objective of fmea is dash and not it is actually failure prevention and not failure detection so it is not a post accident scenario 
it is a perceived deviation from the design intent which is carried even at the design stage itself. So, that FMA studies are considered to be very very powerful and effective to control hazards even in the manufacturing stage itself for the design components. Because mostly in many cases in process industries accidents are originated from the faulty maintenance of equipments, from faulty maintenance of control mechanisms like sensors, sprinklers, fire fighting systems etcetera, which ripen to become very serious accidents. Therefore, FME has been recommended as mandatory study as a part of hazard analysis for every chemical process industry which encompassed by lot of electromechanical systems in terms of control, process, manufacturing, production etcetera. What do you understand by weak link? Weak link is the one of is the one whose risk priority number is the maximum or the highest rank of failure. What is the use of identifying the weak link? So, one can always redesign the system if it is a mechanical FMEA or it is a design FMEA. If it is a process FMEA, then one should redesign a bypass line for the process. You should avoid the presence of weak link in the product line. There are two types of FMEA one can carry. So, name two types of FMEA, we all know design FMEA and process FMEA. Interestingly, what are the advantages? Hazard has when applied to a new design. I mean, that is a very interesting question which you have to accept from your experience. Why Hazard study report requires? software support in the next module i am going to show you the use of software for writing an azap report where i am going to specifically dedicate couple of lectures on use of software hands on experience for hsc there i'll show you how this can be easily used for doing an azap report but we already realized that software support is essential for azap report because creating interlinking between the segments of the plan to understand the failure of the overall system ok. So, friends in this lecture we discussed about the details of cause and effect diagram applied to an example case of FMEA. We revisited the FMEA variables severity, occurrence and detectability after understanding them and applying an cause and effect diagram for an airbag system, we prepared a detailed worksheet of FMEA, identified the critical failure modes of an airbag system in a passenger car and set an example to understand how FMEA can be carried out and how FMEA can convert the qualitative understanding of failure modes to a quantitative realization of risk priorities. We also understood certain exercises in terms of objective and subjective questions which will make you to revisit all the lectures in this module and I am sure that the module 2 lectures would have been very useful for you 
to understand the basics of operational safety which was the main focus and theme of objective 2 in modules. So, module 1 and module 2 has to be revisited you have got to listen to all the lectures back again. Module 1 focused on environmental management and HSE practices related to environmental management and control. Module 2 focused on operational safety where we have completed about 24th lecture today on module 2. So, friends before we move on to the next and the last module of this particular course, my sincere request to you all is please look into all the references given in NPTEL website. Please have an access to the textbooks referred by me in the due course of the lectures. Read more parallel material, apply simple examples in your real life practice to understand how comfortably an ASAP study can be carried out, how an FMEA study can be applied to an existing design in your office. So, that the day you get the comfortable applications of ASAP study or ASAD analysis and risk analysis on your practical table problems, I will be glad that my objective of delivering this course online to the n mass of MOOC listeners is fulfilled and I will be very happy and it will be one of the important mission of this particular program as NPTEL and through this course I will be glad if you post your questions and if you also ask me or demand me more for more illustrative examples in sense to make the concepts make clear. Thank you very much and bye.